Good morning, everyone. Today is the 13th Sunday after Trinity 2020, and we use Divine Service Setting 3 on page 184 for our Divine Service, the Lutheran Service Book, page 184. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Wherefore we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, most, most merciful God. God who has given your only begotten Son to die for us. Have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit increase in us true knowledge of you, and of your will, and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in his name, he gives power to become children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this Lord unto us all. Amen. Have regard for the covenant, O Lord. Let not the downtrodden turn back in shame. Arise, O God, defend your cause. Do not forget the clamor of your foes. O God, why do you cast us off forever? Why does your anger smoke against the sheep of your pasture? Remember your congregation, which you have purchased of old which you have redeemed to be the tribe of your heritage. Remember Mount Zion, where you have dwelt. Do not forget the life of your poor forever. Let the poor and needy praise your name. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Have regard for the covenant, O Lord, let not the downtrodden turn back in shame. Arise, O God, defend your cause. Do not forget the clamor of your foes. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of our Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sinnest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. 
Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, give us an increase of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you have promised. Make us love what you have commanded through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The epistle reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 3. To give a human example, brothers, even with a man-made covenant, no one annuls it or adds to it once it has been ratified. Now the promises were made to Abraham and to his offspring. It does not say, and to offsprings, referring to plural, many, but referring to one, and to your offspring, who is Christ. This is what I meant. The law, which came 430 years afterward, does not annul the covenant previously ratified by God so as to make the promise void. For if the inheritance comes by the law, it no longer comes by promise, but God gave it to Abraham by a promise. Why then the law? It was added because of transgression, unless the offspring should come to whom the promise had been made, and it was put in place through angels by an intermediary. Now an intermediary implies more than one, but God is one. Is the law then contrary to the promises of God? Certainly not. For if a law had been given that could give life, then righteousness would indeed be by the law. But the scripture imprisoned everything under sin so that the promise of faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You are the God who works wonders. You have made known your might among the peoples. You with your arm redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. Hallelujah. O Lord God of my salvation, I cry out day and night before you. Hallelujah. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 10. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Turning to the disciples, Jesus said privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings desire to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. And behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have answered correctly, do this and you will live. But he desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? 
Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place where he saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when you come back. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? The lawyer replied, the one who showed mercy. And Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. This is the gospel reading. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The hymn of the day is number 683, Jesus, thy boundless love, 683, the Lutheran service book. Jesus, thy boundless love to me, no thought can reach, no tongue declare. Unite my thankful heart to thee, and reign without a rival there. Thine only, thine alone I am, be thou alone my constant flame. O oh, grant that nothing in my soul may dwell but thy pure love alone. O oh, may thy love possess me whole, my joy, my treasure, and my crown. All coldness from my heart removed, my every act with thought be Oh, this love unwearied I pursue, and don't bless me to the house. Oh, may thy love my hope renew, burn in my soul a heavenly fire, and day and night be all my care to guard this sacred treasure there. In suffering be thy love, my peace. In weakness be thy love, my power. And when the storms of life shall cease, 
Oh, Jesus, in that fine gold time, be thou my rod and staff and guide and draw me safely to thy side. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The reading that we will look at more closely this morning is from Luke 10, the parable of the Good Samaritan. To best understand this extremely familiar parable, we should take a closer look beyond the familiar narrative and usual application to examine the dialogue involved and the way things were said to glean even further meaning from it. To begin with, the way the lawyer phrased his question, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And the fact that later we are told he was trying to justify himself showed his faulty understanding of the way that salvation works. He spoke of inheriting eternal life, but asked what work he had to do, as though justifying himself were even possible. Already at the outset, it was clear that he had departed from the usual meaning of inheritance. An inheritance is not something that you work for. An inheritance is something unearned and undeserved. Then that same man thought that he could earn his salvation, justify himself, basing eternal life on his works and achievements against the biblical understanding or biblical teaching that salvation does not work that way. As we heard a few Sundays ago, by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. The lawyer did not come up with this faulty view of salvation himself. We know from rabbinic writings that his views reflected their teaching concerning eternal life at the time and ever since in many circles. Jesus was aware of this problem of false teaching among the rabbis. So rather than refuse to go along with the lawyer by declaring the question to be invalid and just contradicting him, as he could have done, Christ chose to teach something by concentrating on the real meaning of obeying God's law. So in reply to the lawyer's question, Jesus asked a question of his own. He said to him, what is written in the law? How do you read it? And the lawyer answered, you shall love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have answered rightly. Do this, and one will live. The lawyer wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus told the parable of the Good Samaritan. Loving God wholeheartedly and loving your neighbor as yourself is not a matter of holding a doctrine, as much as it is a matter of expressing love, really loving, in real life. By asking who is my neighbor, it sounds like Jesus' opponent was willing to consider applying the principles of love that he had just articulated. Yet, Jesus told his parable to the man, making the main character a Samaritan. Knowing that his opponent drew the line at loving Samaritans, Sadly, many Christians, just like unbelievers, are happy to love their friends and people like themselves, 
people they admire, that they get along with easily, but how many, like Jesus' opponent, draw the line somewhere? And beyond that, refuse to show love to certain neighbors and can hardly bring themselves even to speak of them. When Jesus asked the question, which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers, the lawyer could not bring himself even to say the word Samaritan. Instead, he replied, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. That lawyer who believed in loving God wholeheartedly and loving his neighbor as himself did not yet know Jesus Christ. Oh, he was speaking with Christ, but he did not know Christ as you and I know him. This Jewish lawyer did not know Christ as you and I know him, or as an ex-Jewish Pharisee would later describe Jesus as someone who, although he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in likeness of men, being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. God expressed his love. He didn't just believe in love. He showed his love for the world by sending his son, Jesus Christ. Christ showed his love for his neighbor by giving his all. He found you, he found me, stripped, beaten, and left for dead by sin, death, and the devil. And he treated us as his neighbors, more than neighbors, his friends. He loved his neighbor as himself, laying down his life for you and me, taking up his life again as the ever-living Lord of love. It is from this Jesus, the Lord of love, that we learn how to love both God and neighbor. It is from our own experience of being loved in spite of all our sins and shortcomings that we learn to extend love, forgiveness, and acceptance to those who are also loved by God despite themselves, loved by God People like us, unworthy sinners, broken people, weak and victimized by sin. Who is my neighbor? Look around you. Not at people you already love or admire. Look at, the, at those who need love, who need mercy, who need compassion, who need grace. Then, Show mercy as you have opportunity to do so. Proclaim the good news. God loves you. So love all and do good to all. Not as though salvation was earned that way, but because salvation is expressed that way. Our Savior Jesus Christ has had compassion on you and me. He has shown us the mercy and love of God. Go and do thou likewise. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. Amen. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not.
out away from thy presence and take not thy holy spirit with from me restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the church throughout the world, and especially for our region of international missions, that we would not bypass those in need, but rather be filled with God's own grace, love and compassion to care for all our neighbors. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Lord of the harvest to send forth workers into his vineyard, that through their service the world would come to know the compassion and care of Jesus Christ, the good Samaritan. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all missionaries, especially Ted, our regional director, and all area facilitators, that they would be faithful in organizing around Christ's great commission in their administration of the oil and wine of God's word and sacraments. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are enemies of God and his people at the moment, that by the working of the word and spirit of God, their hearts would be changed and they would be given the gifts of repentance and faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For a good harvest, for crops protected from drought and famine, for people delivered from illness and fear, and all the abundant provisions that are needed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all governments and those in authority, that they would justly and wisely use their position and power to promote the general welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and the suffering, especially the victims of the worldwide pandemic, that God would provide care and rest for them and according to his will, a restoration to earthly health. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the church triumphant and the church militant, that all who have received the inheritance of eternal life in Christ would be united forever in a holy communion with them and dwell in the promised land of the new heavens and the new earth to come on the last day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Lord, Father, Lord, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy, thy kingdom Lord, come, thy Lord, will be done Lord, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Let us conclude with the singing of hymn 700, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, number 700. We'll sing it to a, a, a different tune, but uh, I think you'll be able to join in. Love divine, all loves excelling, joy of heaven to earth comes down, fix in us 